You are listening to Setting History Straight with Linda Watson on Hebrew Nation Radio. So what we're going to talk about today is the king of Assyria. And you know, in the, I'm going to ask the question, is that Putin? So is Putin the king of Assyria? And we're going to cover some stuff that's going on around us today. Now, all of you by now can see what's going on. And you can see that that the first two or three seals in the book of Revelations are definitely open. Now, how many of you know what I'm talking about when you read about the uh, black horse and it says that it takes all your money just to buy bread? Uh, and that is absolutely talking about inflation, the prices of gas and food and a shortage of food we can actually see now and they're telling us to beware of it, okay? And then wars and rumors of wars. We're, we're watching this uh, war play out in Russia and the Ukraine, right, between the two of those. And, and we're going to say right off the bat that, you know, tomorrow Putin could die and father could put somebody else in his place. Do you all understand that it's, it's not about an individual, it's about a role. And that's what we're going to talk about is the role. And so Ezekiel 17, verse 2, this, this is a real interesting verse. It says, Son of man, put forth a riddle and speak a parable unto the house of Israel. And so parable, riddle, uh, the, the Messiah told the disciples, I'm I teach everything in parables. And they asked him, why do you do that? He said, because it's not for everybody to understand, but it's for you to understand. The believers were to understand it. And so he, these things are multi-layered. And so when you read scriptures, it doesn't matter where you are in time. If you were in the 12th century, and if you were living in the 12th century, the people were reading scripture at that time, and they thought that those prophecies were applying to them. The, the people who were the Waldesians that was a little before this time, they thought that the, the prophecies were talking to them. They actually thought that the Catholic Church was the beast. And they said that, that the Catholic Church was the beast. And you see these things that people just say, well, it's only one interpretation that you can only see it one way. No, that's not how the father works. It has multi layers. So when you see this beast, it doesn't just have one meaning. It has many meanings. And so, you know, somebody says, well, it's the Catholic church. And yet yeah, the Catholic church could be a piece of this. Do y'all see what I'm saying? And of course it, it's the beast itself was a government that we that Revelation 17 talks about. It was a government that started really at the time of Nimrod. And it went forward all the way through. And when you get to the book of Revelations, it says five of these kingdoms have fallen. The sixth one was, which was Rome. And it says two more are to come. These were governments that Israel lived under are was associated with and so do you do y'all see that that this thing is a multi-layered thing and that you know there are i'm not saying you can't make mistakes in prophecy i'm just saying that it it has many layers and when we think of scripture we think of prophecy we need to understand what the scripture says it says we look in the mirror and we see it through our own eyes. And so I think that's really a critical piece to understand. Now, there are many parables and, and parallels between America and the old land of Israel. Now, you know that Jonathan Kahn has been teaching this heavily for a long time. He has been teaching this heavily. And so they don't see us as Israel. They see Israel, many people see Israel in the Middle East as Israel. But the, it's funny because the Christians realize that they're spiritual Israel, but they can't make that connection that that's what 
the father's calling Israel. He's calling Israel these people that believe in the Messiah. And so it's, it's the most incredible thing. And it winds up being the Western part of the world. The people that are considered the Western nations. All right. So in the land of Israel, the land of Israel was divided in half. You know that was Rehoboam and Jeroboam. They split the nation of Israel down the middle and one, the northern part was called Israel. The southern part was called Judah, right? So today the land is divided between the north and the south. Totally different mindsets. The people in the north and the people in the south have tiff totally different mindsets. They have different points of view. The people in the south are much more conservative. The people in the north are much more liberal. And, and this is exactly what you saw going on in the land of Israel. You had two different sets of people that thought two different ways. And so one went one direction the other went the other direction. They had their own kings. So the parable and the, and the parallel is playing out in this country, and many people don't see it, but I know all of you see it. And so it's divided politically between the liberals and the conservatives. This country is just split down the middle at this point. And another example is the Republicans and the Democrats. This is that split. So this land is divided that we live in. And the division is, is becoming greater day in after day. Now, we're going to go through and talk about this. The northern part of Israel, you can see it here on the map. And then the southern part of Israel. And then you have, talking politically, you have the north and you have the south. But, you know, you really have the entire country split down the middle. But these are the two big divisions between the north and the south. The country split down the middle between the conservative people and the liberals. And so you, you have the Democrats in the mainly in the northern part of the country. And then you have the Republicans in the southern part of the country that are the conservative people. So now watch Isaiah chapter 7, verse 16. And it says, behold, a child. Now this child, everybody used this definition for the Messiah and the Messiah's return the first time. And it does, it does indicate that. But this child also represents something else. It represents the birth of a government that's coming that I think started, that's already underway and started because the father is building his house. Now, when I say everybody in this, in the, in this country is tuned to think that they are successful if they have a good job. If they have a good job, they think, well, that makes me successful. But the father says that what makes you successful and prosperous is if you build your house. And your building your house has a lot of meaning. It has, it could be physically building your house, yes, but it also has to do with, with how you, your family, how and relationships and so that's the real that's the real blessings they come that's where the real blessings come from is from building your house and building your relationship with your family and 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 you know and and your relatives because they were all part of that house now if you remember in scripture it would say um the house of jesse which was david's uh, family, remember that they called him the House of Jesse. That was the that was Jesse's tribe and his family, and that and David was part of Jesse's tribe and that family. So you know this is what it means when you says to build your house. That's where the emphasis needs to be is on the re relationships. If you are successful that in that, that is true success. That is true success to be successful in relationships. And not too many people realize that. And especially today, it's all about, well, you know, it's all about a job. Well, a job can be part of building your house too. 
I mean, that can be part of building your house. Remember in the book of Haggai, it says, you know, even though you're in a bad time frame, continue to build your house. Well, the house that we're building right now is the father's building a church. And he's building a church not with a denomination. He's building a church with the people that he, he is using right now. He's building that church. And that's the house that he's building. Do y'all do you understand that? We need to go through the book of Haggai. That might be a real good thing for us to go through. Because man, that thing has so much meaning. But it says, the child shall know to refuse evil and choose good. See, this doesn't talk about the Messiah because he didn't have a problem with knowing how to choose, choose good and refuse evil. That's not the Messiah is talking about you. That's taught an example of that in this country is the conservative people learning Torah, learning that they need to follow the Messiah and turn their hearts back. Before it says, before the child will know to refuse evil, which is this government in this country, and choose good, which is Torah, and keeping God's ways and following them, the land that he abhors shall be forsaken of both her kings so two, kings are associated with two divisions in the country that is going to be a, the liberal division we all know who's running that business and the conservative you know somebody like trump is representing those two kings and so he's actually referring to this country as being split down the middle and that is the uh, plumb line that's talked about in Amos. It says, you know, go sp spread a plumb line across the nation. And that's what this is. It's a, it's a split. So let's compare the, the uh, and parallels to Judah in this country. We want to talk about it in this country. So Genesis 49, verse 10, it says, the scepter shall not depart from the feet of Judah. And that was King David and his line. King David's line, which was the, he came from the uh, line of Perez, right? He, his line went down and it didn't just die out, okay? It actually was transplanted by Jeremiah into, uh, into the area of Ireland. And it spread back into England and the Queen of Elizabeth sits on that throne today. And so he said, you're, and when you read in 1 Kings, that's one of the promises that was given to David, that you will never lack for someone to sit on your throne. You will never lack. It will, there will be somebody sitting on your throne, David, and, uh, and for us forever, is what he said. What a blessing. And so he also was told that nor a lawmaker between your feet. So the lawmaker is who Judah was. He was the lawmaker. And so this is, this is the, in this, if you're comparing it to this country, a conservative person in this country plays the role of Judah today. So how do they do that? Because these are the people that love the constitution, which is the law, which is based on biblical law then you and they also are more in tune to following the conservative values and principles that came from the Bible okay doesn't mean some of the people that are liberals don't do some of this too but they this is mainly the south and mainly Judah and mainly the conservative people we're talking about here that they have the law between their feet. They're the people of law and order. That's really easy to see in this country. So like I said before, we're drawing a parallel here. And they are more religious than the people in the liberal part of the country. That is definitely true. You know, so I mean, and you know, there's another, uh, the name of Judah means to praise. And if you go into church, Churches in the South, the Southern part of the United States, they do a lot of praise and worship. And you'll notice that that's one of the differences, I think, 
when you go into the Southern churches is they do a lot of praise and worship. And I, I just think that's kind of interesting to draw that parallel. Now, Zechariah 11, verse 6, for I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land. That's talking about our time said Jehovah, but lo, I will deliver the men, every one into the hand of his neighbor, into the hand of his king, that is right now as Biden, and they shall smite the land out of their hand, I will, I will not deliver them. So this is in reference to the government that we see going on right now, because the people who are in the liberal part of the political arena are in charge. They're in charge of everything. They're in charge of the government, the education, you name it, the, the, uh, the court systems, the, probably the Supreme Court eventually. Uh, they are the ones in charge. And it says that I'm going to bring ever deliver a man, everyone against his neighbor will that's what's going on now. There's, this is this fight that's going on between every day that you see between the conservative people and the liberals in this country. So this is definitely true. This is, and he said, I'm not going to deliver you out of their hand. So I think that's interesting to, to see that. Now, Isaiah 7, verse 17, the Lord shall bring upon thee and upon thy people and upon thy father's house days that have not come since the day, that should be since the day that Ephraim departed from Judah. So there was a split between Rehoboam and Jeroboam and Israel set up their kingdom and their king and Judah set up their kingdom and their king. And they said, this was gonna happen again at another time in your history. And that's what it's saying here. The, your father's house, the days that have not come from the day that Ephraim departed from Judah. That is the split. That is talking about the split that's going on right now. Because it was a split back then. And he's saying it's coming again. And there's going to be another split. Well, we're in the middle of it now. And so even since the time of, a, of Assyria, he's saying. so. Um, I'm going to cover something that's going to be very profound here, that's going to nail what I'm just explaining here. And Isaiah 22, verse 8, and he took away the covering of Judah. And in that day, he looked, covering means their protection. That's one of the meanings of that word. In that day, he will look to the weapons of the house of the forest. Okay. All right. So, if you know anything about the South, they love their guns. They love their guns. The house of the forest, you know, uh, let's get into this so y'all can see what it's talking about. Now, Ezekiel 20, verse 46, son of man, set your face toward the South. Now, the South in the Middle East, in the old land of Israel, would have been Judah. Is that not true? But he's not talking to them here. And, and you're going to see that. Set thy face toward the south. That's the southern part of the United States. Now I'm going to prove this to you. Drop thy words toward the south. Prophesy against the forest of the south. If you drive out of the state of Louisiana into Mississippi, Alabama, uh, Georgia, and even into the Carolinas and up into uh, parts of Tennessee, you, that is all forest land. That is, that is all forest land. People, please understand, they don't have a forest in, in, in the South, in Jerusalem and in the, the land of Israel. They don't have a forest. They don't have one. So who is this talking to? There's only one set of people it can be talking to. And that's the same people that carry their guns. I mean, this is really easy to see. He said, now tell them this. This is what he said you want to tell them. And say to the forest of the south, hear the words of the Lord's. Thus said the, 
Lord God, behold, I will kindle a fire in thee and I will devour every green tree in thee and every dry tree. That is the young people and the old people. He's, he's talking about that has, that has a, a different meaning. He's going to light a fire under them. He's going to stir their spirit and he's going to light a fire under them. That's what he's saying. And this also has to do, fire has to do with tribulation and it has to do with, with a lot of uh, punishment and judgment. And so when he, somebody lights a fire, that's what in scripture, that's what it's referring to is, is tribulation, fire, punishment. In this, you know, many people like to go and interpret the Bible. They see that there's parallels, but they don't go back to scriptures to prove what these things mean. Scripture talks and tells you it's, it's a code book. The Bible is a code book, but we need to understand that you can't just make it up as you go along. You've got to go find, because he puts the clues and he puts the, the meanings of the symbols in, in scripture. And so he tells you that, you know, that tribulation trials are associated with fire. That's talked about in the New Testament. So this is meaning that there's going to be tribulation and punishment for these people. But he also is lighting the fire under them spiritually. And so that's what you're going to see waking up. That's the little child that's coming to fruition is out of those conservative people. He's building a house, that same house that's in talked about in the book of Haggai. He's building his house. So, all right, so let's go through this. Isaiah 8, verse 4, and behold, the child shall have knowledge to, before the child has knowledge to cry, my father and my mother, before he knows that he is Israel and that his father was, was Jacob and his mother was Rachel. Before he knows that he is Israel, the riches of Damascus and the spoils, which is your wealth of Samaria shall be taken before the king of Assyria. So king of Assyria is the one that's coming in to take your wealth and to take your riches. Do y'all see that? Now let's talk about this because the word Damascus means, if you look this up in the blue letter Bible, it tells you it's to silence the sackcloth weaver. Well, who are the sackcloth weavers? Those are the people out there that are, you know, sending emails, they're sending, um, they're seeing it's finding websites and they send in links to people. They're, they're trying to show people what's going on, right? I mean, that's many of us. Many of us, we're doing that. We're those sackcloth weavers. We're telling people, <laughs> put on your sackcloth for repentance. Sackcloth is associated with repentance. So we are those people. So they want to silence us. And so who's doing the silencing? I'll tell you who's doing the silencing. That is Twitter, that is Facebook, that is the other social media. And, you know, don't leave out everybody else in the government that wants to censor you also. So these, this is when it's talking about the, the riches of Damascus. So all of these guys that are involved with the social media, their, their stuff is gone. They're, they're going to be taken down. And it says, then the spoils of Samaria. So people say, well, who is Samaria? Well, see, scripture tells you who Samaria is. And we're going to get to that in just a second here. Now, Isaiah 7, verse 16, and behold, this child shall know to refuse evil and choose good in the land that thou abhorrest. That's, uh, that's our country today. We abhor the way this government is being ran shall be forsaken by both kings. The father doesn't look at government the way you and I do. We only see one king in this country and we see that as our president. That's not what he's saying here. He says there's two kings. There's somebody representing this, the conservative people, i.e. that's probably Trump is over Trump. And they'd like to see figure out a way to get him in jail. And so it says, the land that thou, of course, shall be forsaken by both of your, of her two kings. All right. So 
Now look at this. This is who Samaria is. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Zion is Israel. All of these Christian nations are playing the role of Israel. And they trust. They're, set, they're easy. In other words, woe to them that are at ease in Israel. So just uh, substitute your name of your country in here so you, it makes sense. Woe to those that are, are at ease in America. They're not taking this serious. And trust in the government of Samaria. Mountain represents government. You get that from Revelation 17. It talks about all of those countries that come up as mountains and hills. So government is, as, is associated with a mountain of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations. So who is the chief of the nations? Uh, that's obvious who that is. So Samaria is called the people that are the chief of the nations. Right now, America is the chief of the nations still. To whom the house of Israel came. So it, the people from Israel, in the, from the Israelites, moved into this place called Samaria. That is the migration of the people into our land. Australia, New Zealand, uh, England, all the other countries. But Samaria is the chief of the nations. Do y'all see that? So going back here, it says, the riches of Damascus and the spoils of Samaria shall be taken down before the king of Assyria. So this king of Assyria is the one that takes them down. Now, who is this child? And we want to just spend a, a minute on this. Isaiah 9, verse 6. And until unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government should be on his shoulders. So he's telling you that this child, which is really a people, but is also can represent the Messiah. And maybe somebody else, I don't know. The government's going to be on his shoulders. Well, we know who's going to, whose shoulders the government's going to be on when the when the Messiah returns. It's going to be on his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. So that's the Messiah. And he's going to set up the government. It's not going to be the government of Russia and China and the Far East. It's going to be the government. It's going to be the Messiah's government that he sets up. So now it's not just a split. Now, I'm going to talk to you about what went on this week. The, um, and Glenn Beck talked about this, and he said there was a news report that came out of the New York Times, and they said now there's a split going on between the East and in between the West, he said. Just like there's a split in this country, there's a split in the world. And he said that split we're going to start moving away from goods and services in the east well we're going to really find sorry said you all of you are going to suffer from this but we're going to do these sanctions so he's already started the sanctions with with uh with this country so this is the battle between esau and jacob this world is divided between two you can now see it and you could see what's going on, how all of these Eastern nations are now supporting Putin. They're now supporting Russia. And they're all lining up on that side of the world. They're all behind Putin and what he's doing. And then you have all the, the Western world that is really Jacob. And, and you know, all the fathers is using this Ukraine, one of the things he's using it for is to create this split. Because even today, Biden comes out and calls um, Putin a butcher. He's called him a war criminal. So, you know, when you get in an argument with people, you know, sometimes you'll get into an argument, people. Well, so it starts out real mild and then it builds up and then you get to the name calling stage. <laughs> so that's where Biden is now. He's at the name calling stage. <laughs> so, you know, that shows, that's when you have lost control. So, you know, that's why it's so important, I think, 
that somebody who was a teacher is, you know, is very seasoned and in, in, in not older, but seasoned in, in uh, scripture and, and, um, and being what we call a peacemaker. So Biden is not a peacemaker, but scripture tells you that we are to be peacemakers. We're, we're supposed to be those kind of people. We're supposed to keep the peace. And we're supposed to unescalate things when they, when they happen. And see, that's not what Biden's doing. Y'all can see this. Even, you know, Father uses, he uses young people for uh, things. You remember Jeremiah? He said, you know, I can't do this because I'm too young. He said, I'm too young to do this. And then uh, Samuel said the same thing, but they were spiritually ready. Do y'all see what I'm saying? They were, they were probably spiritually beyond their years, even though they were young. They were spiritually above their years. And the father knew that they can do it. You know, I don't know how young Jeremiah was when he started his ministry, um, you know, but he probably was, I, I would guess, probably in his 20s. He said, you know, I just can't do this. I can't. He said, I'm too young. And the father says, oh, yes, you can. He says, I, I, I chose you before you were in the womb, while you were in the womb. You know, <laughs> so this was your, in other words, this was your destiny. This is what I had always planned for you to do. So he had to have the spiritual understanding. You know, I, I, I know with myself, the father started working with me at a very young age. And some of y'all probably can tell the same story that, you know, you know that the father was working with you when you were just a young child. And he does that. You know, so we've got it off the subject here. We need to get back to the subject. So what we see going on is this battle between Esau and Jacob. And that is the split. And they, they're calling this uh, the... the um, bipolar uh, system split. And that's what they're addressing. They're calling it two different governments. Now, before this, they were working Biden and, and according to um, some of the people that I've read some of their information, they were working on a system that was a, a, a four-way split taking the world and splitting it four ways because they don't like America being the uh, king of the hill. And so they said, well, America, you can, you can cover the area of America and Mexico and South America. You can be in charge of that region. And then Europe, you can be in charge of the region that goes all the way down the, into uh, Africa. And then Russia, you can be in charge of the region in your area all the way down. Uh, and then China would be in charge of the region in her area, which would be, which would include Korea and in that area, which see, this is what their plan was. This was their plan all along. And this, <laughs> this is very interesting because, uh, and they're, they're wanting this floor way split, but now see, Putin and many of the other people in the liberal government now is pushing for a two-way split. And they're look, and so that's going to really, this is where we're going to have food shortages. This is where we're going to have uh, unbelievable inflation because we can't get some of the products. We may not be able to get some of the products from Russia and China. Believe me, when Pete Biden, all of those CEOs this week, that's what he was discussing. How is this sanctions? going to affect you how does that can you get your goods and services that you need if i put these sanctions in that's had to be the discussion he was having with those men although they didn't really say that but this battle is now escalated and we see the split coming on the scene which is exactly what the scriptures talked about all right, this is the key verse right here, Jeremiah 9, verse 25. Behold, the day shall come, said the Lord, that I will punish all of them which are circumcised, that is Jacob, with the uncircumcised. All right, now look at this. Jeremiah 9, verse 26. Egypt, 
Judah, Edom, the children of Ammon, Moab, and all of these are in the altar corners shall dwell in the wilderness for all of these nations are uncircumcised. Do y'all see that? So that's the Eastern part of the world over there. They're considered the uncircumcised. So that's telling you, he's telling you who they are. Now he didn't mention all of them. He said there was some in the all most corners that's china and russia so what he's saying here is the eastern side of the world is the uncircumcised and the other side of the world which is the western part of the world is the one that's considered jacob this is this is where the rubber hits the road and then it says all of the house or israel are uncircumcised in their heart well you can say that again so this goes back to the fulfillment, we see in the fulfillment of Romans 11, verse 25, I would not have you brothers that you should be ignorant of this, lest you should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Now, the fullness of the Gentiles is just now getting started. The fullness hadn't hit us yet because they haven't taken down these countries of of um of jacob yet that'll be the fullness and then it says when that happens the blindness is lifted from israel she will at that point realize many things she'll realize who she is she'll realize that she's supposed to be keeping god's laws his sabbath his holy days all of it it says the blindness in part is happened to Israel until the blind. So then you see the blindness is going to be lifted. Now, remember, uh, it was Rebecca that was riding the camel and she had her covering over her face. And when she saw her husband from a distance, she raised her covering. That is symbolic of what we're talking about here. Where these nations, these Christian nations are eventually going to lift their covering and see their Messiah from a distance, knowing that he's coming. Okay, so going on, Genesis 27, verse 38, and Esau said unto his father, has thou not at one blessing? My father bless me, even me also, oh, my father, he's begging his daddy, give me a blessing. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. You kind of feel sorry for him. But this wasn't the father's will that he get this blessing. In Genesis 27, verse 39, and, es and Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thou dwells, thou shalt dwell among the fattest of the earth. So all the wealthy cities is where you're going to find Esau. Where the wealth is, the fattest the wealthy cities and of the dew of the heaven from above and by the sword shall thou live and thou shalt serve thy brother and he shall come and it shall come to pass that when thou has had your dominion that's what we're talking about here that thou shall break the yoke off of your neck so when you finally reach the point that you're not going to have no more of it, you're going to break the yoke off. Do y'all see that? That is being fulfilled right now. Genesis 40, 27, verse 40. By your sword, you shall live and you shall serve your brother. But when you grow restless, and that's what you see going on in these Eastern countries, they are growing restless. You shall break the yoke off your neck. And people, that's exactly what you see happening on the east side of the world. They have broken their yoke off. They have become restless and they say no more because they see the sins that are going on in this country. Now they have sins, no doubt that they have sins, but the things that are going on in this country are way out of bounds where they can't even, you had a judge this week that couldn't tell you what a girl is. And they're fixing to put that woman in the Supreme Court. And she doesn't know, she can't define what a girl or a woman is. 
that should tell you everything. And these other nations are watching us and they're seeing this, the stuff that we're doing. And so it's, you know, the father's had enough. And so he's going to send Assyria. Isaiah 10, verse 5, O Assyria, rod of my anger and staff in thy hand is my indignation. This is where Nimrod started, was in the Assyrian Empire. He was in Assyria, and then he also was a king in Egypt. We'll have to prove that another time. Uh, verse 6, I will send him against a, a hypocritic nation. Boy, if we aren't considered a bunch of hypocrites. I don't know who is. And against the people of my wrath, I will give him a charge to take the spoils, to take the prey, to tread them down like the mire in the street. So this is coming. And, and you know, this is what the dis disciples were told, Matthew 13, verse 10. Then the disciples came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered, to you is given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. All this stuff is secrets. It's a code book, but to them, it has not been given. So it's not for them to know, but it's for y'all to know and, and for us to know, right? Now, let's look, at, let's look at this, okay? This is the symbol. This is the, look at this. See, this is the seal for Assyria. Do y'all see? On this picture, the double-headed eagle. Do y'all? I can run my mouse up here so you can see where it is. Here, it's a double-headed eagle. That was their seal. They actually had a um, a stamp that had this on it. And so, this is a picture that you can actually see of the double-headed eagle. Now, here's the coat of arms for the Holy Roman Empire. It has a double-headed eagle. The Byzantine Empire had a double-headed eagle. The Habsburg dynasty had a double-headed eagle. The Prussians have a very similar eagle, but it wasn't double-headed. The German Confederacy had a double-headed eagle. The German Reich, it had only a single eagle, but it looks very similar to all the others. Do y'all see that? So now look at this. Here is Russia. This is the coat of arms for Russia. She has a double-headed eagle. Now, the father has passed this baton down through all of these nations, and now it's in the hands of Russia. It, do y'all see the double-headed eagle? All right, that's their coat of arms. Now, after the political marriage in 1492 of the Russian czar Ivan III to Sophia, the niece of the last Byzantine per Constantine the 11th, interest, it's interesting that he's the 11th. Double-headed eagle became the symbol for the Russian Tsars. So in that interesting, when they, when they married this little princess of the last Byzantine empire into Russia, they, they took on the symbol of the double-headed eagle. Do y'all see this? This is why they want to become the next new Rome. Do y'all see? Does he see that too? Now, when, you know, when, uh, if you're looking at history a little bit here, you know Rome falls in the last leg of it, uh, the uh, Byzantine Empire. It fell in 1553, somewhere in that time frame. And so, then it talks about this resurrection of the whole of the Roman Empire, because you know, all of those countries in Europe were, were they had a Roman government at that point. They had Roman governments. There's no point in lying about that. And it, the scripture says they would break into pieces and scatter everywhere. Well, they went, we brought our Roman government in the very beginning of this country. It was not a Roman government. It was a government based on the constitution which came right out of the Bible, we could all prove that. Man, you can take the whole constitution, go back to the Bible with it. But now we have a Roman government and all of the other nations have it too. And it is the government that persecutes the saints. And I, I'm telling you, we're under Rome. If, if people don't see that, I feel real sorry because this, 
this Roman government has already been resurrected again. It was taken down in 1554 with the fall of the Byzantine Empire. And now it's live and well everywhere, actually, when you stop and think about it. But these guys, these Russian, Russians, they think they're the descendants of the Roman Empire. If, you, if they were telling you the truth, that's what they believe. And the father has passed the baton to them at this point. I mean, you could see where the line went. And he's using, he gave them the same symbol that, that, um, that Assyria had. So the king of Assyria, Isaiah chapter 21, 11, one calls unto me out of, uh, out of Seir. Now Seir was the, was the area where Edom was, that Edom was the descendants of Esau. It says, uh, so it says, so one calls, that's a person calls out of, out of uh, Esau, out of a uh, Sierra. Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? In other words, where are the watchmen? Are you, he says, are you watching to see what's going on here? He's saying, are you watching and are you seeing that there's one that's, that's being raised up here? He calls out of, out of Sierra. So verse 14, the same chapter, unto him there was thirst, they brought forth water and in the inhabitants of the land of, of Tema. Now there's something that goes on here with, um, with the people that are Tema. Tema was one of the sons of Ishmael. Did meet the fugitives with their bread. Okay, so this could be in our time, this could be. Um, what happened in Afghanistan. If y'all remember what happened in Afghanistan, our country really screwed this up with the Afghanis, right? And uh, left a lot of people in that whole region and they, they were just left there and they weren't taken out like they should have been taken out before they pulled their troops out. They should have taken these people out of, out of that region, but they didn't. And we know that story. This may be what it's referring to. It said, make sure they have food and water. So I just think that that may be, in our time, that's what that's linking to. Now, look at this verse, Isaiah 63, 1. Who is this who comes out of Edom? So who is this man that comes out of Edom? In crimson garments with bazral. That, that word bazral means to play a part or a role. So this man has crimson garments. Let me tell you, China's color is red. Russia's color is red. He who is splendor in his apparel, matching in the greatness of his strength, it is I speaking righteousness, righteous and mighty to save. So he probably thinks he's doing a good thing. So verse two, why? Is your apparel red? He's talking to him. How come your apparel is red? Why are you following Esau? You see what I'm saying? This is, this is China and Russia. They are the red countries. It's called red China. And, and the colors for the Kremlin. And, and you know, you're talking about Russia. Russia's colors are red. And your garments like his who is treading with wine press. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Catholic Church. Catholic Church had a, a somebody in it that did a prophecy. And they said that at the end time, Russia would be the avenger of the nations. How interesting is that? So the Pope thought that if he fulfilled the request from the miracles that happened in 1917, there were three children. And one of the things that one of the children said is that you need to consecrate Russia with the bishops. That was supposed to take place yesterday. And according to them, they felt like if they did that, that would keep Russia from being the avenger at the end time. How, how interesting is that? That, you know, that this prophecy says that even the Roman Catholic Church knows that 
Russia is to be the avenger at the end time. How interesting is that? There's so much going on. You, you, you know, you just can't keep up with all of it. So verse three, I have trodden down the wine press alone and from the people no one was with me, I trodden them down in anger and trampled them in my wrath and my life, life bloods splattered. We'll go to Isaiah 10 verse two. Therefore, I, it will come to pass when the Lord has performed his whole work upon Mount Zion in Jerusalem. So when he's finished his work, taking down these countries over here, which is Jacob, okay, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria. So whoever's going to be in charge of Assyria, they get their punishment next. They get their punishment next and his glory and his high look. So he's, he's going to be very proud of what he does. Now, I don't know if that's Putin or if that's somebody else. I have no idea. We haven't found that out yet. But it's right now, Putin is playing the role of, of the king of Assyria. That's what he's doing. Now, will that tomorrow he could die and somebody else takes his place? But right now, it is a line. It is not a person. So Jeremiah 49, verse 17. Also, Edom shall be desolate. Everyone that goes by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plagues. So that's the seven last plagues that hit the eastern part mainly of the world because those are the plagues that come against them because they have, they have not repented either. So the repentance goes out to Jacob's tribes first, which is what is going to be taking place in the next few years, right? That is the child that's going to be brought out of that. That's the house the father is building. That goes back to Haggai. That's the house we're really building, okay? That's us building that house. Verse 49, verse 20, therefore hear the counsel of the Lord that he has taken away Edom for his purpose, that he has purposed against the inhabitants of Tim that would be Ishmael. That would be the Arabs. Surely the least of the flock shall be drawn from them. Surely he shall make their inhabitants desolate with them. So they're coming down. So even though they come against Jacob and they're going to be very proud of themselves that they've taken down all the nations of Israel and probably taken them into captivity. But the father's wrath comes at that point and then this is what they have to deal with so that's what i wanted to cover um For more information about this broadcast, please visit our website at www.12tribehistory.com. That is the number 12, tribehistory.com, or email us at lwatson44 at cox.net with any questions or comments.